Okay, good morning, men. Hope you're all doing okay out there, and this week's not dragged on too much. Um, what day will this be? 20, 24 have been at, at home. Uh, we've just heard in the last half hour that your school holidays are going to be as was planned. So we've got two more weeks of school after this, um, just in case you've missed that bit of news. Um, and obviously we're hoping to get an update next week on things. The, I don't know if any of you saw the talk on Wednesday with Kerry Evans, but uh, near the end, Mr. McBride spoke to him about motivation and just something that hopefully will be of some use to you was he's saying at the moment for all of us, not just for you, but for all of us, it's not the term, time to be focusing on long-term goals. It's the time to be focusing on, he said, bringing a horizon closer to you. So you're worrying about the next task that needs doing, the next lesson you've got to go to, the next hour, the next day, not thinking about the rest of the year yet. You just um, take care of what you can do every day and then, um, and then the more things you can tick off and do, the better you feel about doing them. So a good mind shift, I think, at the moment, to be thinking about short-term things rather than long-term things. Right, we've got a, uh, another guest today. Really looking forward to this one. Uh, you don't want to hear from me this morning. You want to hear from our guest speaker, who Mr. McBride's going to talk to in a minute. His name's Ty Webster, and he was, I think, in the class of 2012. I've been at Westlake for... 18 years now he's right up there as one of the best Westlake sportsmen while he was at school that I, I can remember um, and he wasn't just good at basketball he was great at volleyball he was a good touch player but first and foremost what a basketball I remember him in the 2012 nationals down at Nelson I'm sure it was Nelson and he was the best player there by a mile not just on our team we won the tournament uh, he was um I remember him like playing the whole game and never coming off. That was how good he was. And he'll know more about the specific details, but uh, great memories of Ty when he was at school. And I know he's a big favourite of the Breakers fans at the moment. So I'm going to hand over to Mr. McBride and Ty. Uh, have a good weekend, all of you. Enjoy this talk. We're going to record it so pe more people will get to see it later. The numbers are flooding in all the time at the moment, which is great. So over to Mr. McBride and Ty. Have a good weekend. Right. Good morning, gents. Uh, you won't be able to see me, um, but you should be able to see Ty. If you want to turn your camera on, Ty, and turn your microphone on. I'm good. Perfect. All you boys should be able to see him. Um, and you can pin just so that it doesn't keep flip it, flicking to the Westlake logo. If you click on Ty's, the three dots in the corner of his screen and click pin, uh, you will only see Ty. That's what I've done. So it's just a little technical thing so that you, you've you got the main man on screen at all times. Ty, I don't know. Do we just leave now? Mr. Ferguson's given you such a big um, such a big lead oh, up man. there. I don't know. Can we talk Hell of that, intro. Or? He made one mistake, though. I, I am officially the best uh, athlete to ever bless Westlake. Right. Okay. We've gone early on not that one. one. Of, not one of. The, right, okay. the official. Okay. I think we'll come to uh, confidence in a little bit, but I think we've uh, set our stall out pretty early there, which is nice. Um, your dad might beg to differ. Coach Webster, obviously, boys, is our um, basketball coach now. I think he might lay claim to being the best sportsman at our school, but we'll see. We might come on to family connections in a moment, Ty, but it's great to have you with us. Thank you for, for giving up your time here. And I think we've probably got to start with, you know, how's life as a professional athlete? right now what can you do what can you not do and how are you coping with it yeah it's tough there's a lot of uh uncertainty i think going around right now in uh, professional sports and um nbl you know is trying to get their season started off so and we kind of are just kind of sitting in the dark at the moment and kind of have no idea when they've had a bunch of dates that they're trying to get the season off the ground and just because of the lockdown and the travel restrictions and you know governments doing what they got to do to you know, keep everyone safe. It's just, it's just uh, a time of uncertainty for everyone right now. Yeah. And we know that um, with that in mind, you know, we know having a strong mindset and a positive attitude is a, is a major part of being a, a successful person, in anything, but certainly in sport, how are you, you know, how are you staying positive? How are you staying motivated? What's driving you right now when, you know, you can't get on court? Yeah, it's tough uh, to find things to motivate myself right now, you know, because especially with them being no start date, you know, usually they'll at least give us a, da a date that's solid and we can just go by that, you know, and I have that to look 
look forward to for the for the season. But it's it's tough times right now, and I'm just you know just remembering uh, why I, why I started even playing basketball in the first first place. You know, the, um, I obviously want to take it further than it, than I've been and where I am now, and just just remembering those goals and why I even started and dreams that got me, you know, um, so in love with the game. Yeah, and that's probably a great segue into one of my my first questions. Just you know, you're from a strong sporting family obviously we've, we've touched on your dad played basketball at a high level your brother's a professional athlete your mum was a very very good netballer for New Zealand is it something that you know you talked about dreams and why you started was it in the blood was it you know something you've always been around and was was making it in basketball always the number one goal for you definitely I think from a very young age it was kind of just normal for me as well like I don't ever remember like kind of just all of a sudden taking up basketball. I was just kind of just born into the basketball life. You know, my dad was always in the gym and my brother and stuff. I'm always at the gym. I didn't, I didn't even, first years of my life, you know, I wasn't even necessarily interested in shooting the ball. I'd just be at the gym playing, you know, playing around in the stands like little kids do and stuff. And but by the, by the time I could shoot the ball, you know, I just couldn't put the ball down. Brilliant. And um, yeah, we know you started really young and um, you were pretty handy by the time you got to Westlake. But one, would you say that, you know, you came to Westlake, is that when basketball started becoming serious for you at that high school level? Um, and when you really thought, wow, I've got, you know, I want to make something of this here. Um, and all honestly, like, I, I, I thought I was going to the NBA, like, from primary school, to be honest. Like, yep. no way, and no one could really tell me different either. Like, I, everyone used to ask me whether what I was going to do was just, I was just going to play basketball forever. I just... From, from since I was young, I just knew that I was just going to, I just felt like that was my thing that I had to do. Yeah. Yeah. And and any memories from Westlake on the court, off the court? What are some of your fondest, fondest recollections oh, of your man. time with us? Westlake, I mean, obviously the, the, the fondest being winning that national uh, title down in, uh, in uh, Nelson, I think it was. And, um, you know, that was obviously my great memory, but like, for me, Westlake was a was a huge like step up from you know coming from intermediate and then stepping into the huge. I remember the Sports Institute was. I remember coming into the Sports Institute and um, we had to trial out when we were like an intermediate and we had to come up and play against the high the high school kids and it was like the most daunting thing ever for me. But it was like I took it so serious. It was so exciting to like be able to play against the high school kids and stuff. And and when we went there and we played against them and they just kicked that ass excuse my language but you know <laughs> like right. just yeah just smoked us and like and it was like so like and everyone was like oh my god like we're, we're never going to be that good like these guys these high school kids are amazing and stuff and like I remember just like thinking about that for so long and that's what I used to drive me for so long that those kids were so much better than me yeah so Westlake like, Westlake like changed me and like opened my eyes to the whole different to a whole different world of basketball and being in the institute and stuff like that yeah I remember yep. I used to I used to do the gateway class just so I could um, get that that Wednesday off. We used to every Wednesday used to go and have the work experience. So I did my best job of convincing them that I was just going to play basketball. And they used to let me go to the breakers, and I used to just go to the breakers and pretend that I was doing doing work, and I would actually just be on the court shooting thousands of jump shots on the on the jump shot machine that they had at the time. Yeah, and, I, I, that was my that was one of my favorite things to do. Brilliant, and I suppose it's you know it certainly paid off. Um, Mr. Ferguson's touched on your very successful time, you know, MVP, I believe, in that tournament when you won a national title, um, yeah. playing with some great players. Um, and then the time comes, you know, you've you've got a decision to make. You're about to leave school. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk us through what was going through your head? You know, you knew you were leaving Westlake as a year 13. When did yeah. the US start to become an option and how did you pursue that? Um... For me, it happened, I had made the Tall Blacks. I got a Tall Black trial when I was in year 13. And I um, and we had went away to, we were uh, trying to make the Olympics, I think. We were going for a pre-Olympic qualifying tour. So we played a bunch of, we went on a tour for like almost three months, or two months or something like that. And we played a bunch of tournaments and I ended up playing really well on, on some really big stages against some good international teams. And um like I've got a lot of like kind of publicity around around me being so young, you know, and um, playing so well from the national team. And then once after that kind of got out, uh, the college offers started to come in slowly, you know. And um, my dad had gone to previously gone to Hawaii, so like schools like that were starting to send me letters. Yeah. 
and uh, like LSU schools like um, Nebraska and like a whole bunch of other schools um, would send me, start sending me letters in the mail every day, just like saying that they've seen me play and they're really interested, you know, like asking if I'd be interested in coming to college. And obviously that was something that I was pursuing. You know, I always thought, that uh, college was going to be my, my next step. You know, I had an opportunity to either sign to become a professional and go the breakers route out of high school, or I could have gone to college. And I just knew from, you know, the breakers threw everything they could at the time for me to try to get me to come be a professional at the time. But the college life was just something that I knew I wanted to do. Yep. And I just had to, you know, it was part of my, my, my journey. And I just wanted to, you know, go experience that and test myself against, you know, the best, you know, because that's another level that you're testing yourself going into that into that world. Yeah, absolutely, sure. absolutely. And uh, rumor goes, I don't know how true this story is, Ty, but you sort of settled on Nebraska, but you weren't really sure where Nebraska was. You didn't know too much about it. You'd never been there. I had um, no idea correct? about Nebraska. I had never heard of Nebraska or anything. You know, I had to. Google. I remember them sending letters. I remember googling it at home, sitting on my bed on my laptop, just like watching it, like dead set middle in, in the middle of the united states i'm like oh my god no beaches no nothing i'm thinking it's going to be like you know straight hillbillies and everything around there it's going to be like crazy middle america you know yeah so what but, was the what was the what was the reason for i mean you had a pick of a few colleges what what really yeah. i know you didn't know where nebraska was necessarily but was there something about the program particularly or what was it that drove you there um, at the time, Nebraska, play, the play, Nebraska played in the Big Ten, and the Big Ten was the competition. Like everyone kind of plays in regions in all the colleges, and the Big Ten was the number one yep. competition in co- all of college basketball. They had the best, the best schools, and that. So I instantly it was the, the biggest competition, you know. So my eyes just lit up, and me being as competitive as I was, I wanted to go in there and play against the best. Yeah, I wasn't really settling for anything else. Yeah. And I suppose there's some there's some advice there for the boys listening, you know, not just in sport, but not settling for second place and going somewhere mm-hmm. where, you know, you the stakes are higher and it's going to be tougher um, is, is really important to push yourself, I suppose. And that's that's something the boys can can maybe take from that. Can you give us any um, recollections of, of walking onto the court or getting in there the first couple of weeks? You know, you've, you've, this, you've come from the North Shore of New Zealand. You've been a... Yeah. big name you know at high school but what was it like what was the level like um and how did you find it it was such a shock you know like like you said coming from friday night premier league games you know maybe 100 people in the crowd to sold out 20, uh, sixteen thousand people just screaming you know acting like we're nba players or something you know like it was it was a it was the craziest like eye opener ever you know to yeah. come from that uh, to that you know there's school students there's 20,000 people on the campus you know just walking around you know everyone knows your name stuff like that and it was a huge reality show I remember coming the first week of practice and just getting smoked by everyone like and I'm like these guys are like physical specimens compared to me you know I'm like some little kid like thinking I'm you know putting in work every day and stuff and I'm lifting my little weights and stuff. And these guys are lifting like proper grown man weights every day, like throwing me around like I'm a little child and stuff. But it's all part of the, you know, it's all part of the journey. You know, everyone goes through that and, you know, you come out the other side of it, you know, a beast more times than not. But yeah, it's definitely, there's definitely, a, it was definitely a change of scene for me. Yeah. And is that something, obviously, you know, some people, you can go one of two ways at that point. You can, you can go into your shell and think, oh my God, these yeah. guys, you know, I'm, nev- I'm never going to match them or you can walk towards yeah. it. What was your mindset going into that and seeing people from, you know, the US and all over the world who are just bigger, faster, um, stronger? What, what, what yeah, was your yeah. approach? I was like, confidence was never a problem for me going in. Like, I was never, you know, Mr. Ferguson would tell yourself, I was probably the most, one of the most confident kids, you know, at the school. I knew I, I, knew I was going to do this basketball thing. I knew I was good. I knew I had gifts and talents and all that stuff like that. And then once I got to Nebraska, that was all shut down. It was a huge reality shock. And I kind of did go into my shell for a bit. You know, I was struggling. I missed home. You know, I was going through all types. I wanted, I, there was times I wanted to quit. A couple of times I wanted to come, I called home. You know, I called my mom and just said, like, I don't know if this is for me. Like, maybe I should have done the breakers thing. And then she just reassured me that I should just stick it through, you know, and like, and just ended up ended up just pushing through it and coming out of it. And it was the best thing I ever did by just sticking through it. You know, it was, everyone goes through tough times, but you don't realize at the time that everyone's going through it. You know, it feels like the whole world's going, you know, it feels like it's the first time ever. I feel like you're the only one going through that type of, 
type of yeah. pressure. You're the only one feeling the feelings you feel, and but you, you know you're not alone in those types of things. You know, and it's it's always better to push through. Yeah, and I think sharing that honesty that's something the boys will really value because they they're at a different stage of their life to you, and maybe they've got a few of those things to come. So it's it's really nice to get that that feedback from you. Um, I suppose from what I've read and correct me if I'm wrong, it was sort of your third year at university when you really started to make your mark and on the court and um, yeah. academically as well. We got a nice message saying you'd made a bit of an honors role for academia as well, which was nice. Um, so you're, you're balancing off academics, but obviously you're driving forward with your basketball. Those year three, would you say that's when you, you broke out and you started to, you know, it looks like you were getting a lot more game time, scoring a lot more points, leading a lot of, yeah charts on assists and steals and things what yeah was, yeah that's kind anything of, that changed specifically from year two to year three well yeah i kind of i kind of just kind of defined a role on the team you know and the team everyone kind of has to have a role you know we're only going to ever have a guy like one or two you know star players so to speak you know like and i had by then i had finally found the role that i can bring something to the team and be successful and it all started on the defensive end like oh you know i've never been a defensive player my whole life. Like I obviously just like to score baskets like everyone else, you know, make shots, do dunks, all of that stuff. But for me, like the first two years, I struggled, I struggled doing that. And that's my game. And I predicated my game off that built. Those were my strengths. So I had to go find something else. And I found it by just defending the best players on the other team. And that's like, that's what kind of got me more game time. And by the, and then, you know, the confidence started to rise because I was, you know, shutting down their best player. And then, all of a sudden, my offense started to come back and I started to, you know, get on a roll and stuff. And by year three, in, by the time the season came back around for the year four, I was rolling, you know. And yep. I had established myself and, you know, by then I'm both the best defender and the best offender on the team now. So, like, you know, that's the, yeah, I, I think just, the, I just kind of found a, found a niche that I, I could bring something to the team with. Yeah, a good, a good message there for the boys about being patient and biding your time as well and, yeah, yeah. believing in yourself even though you know you might not be getting those minutes on court or you may not be getting the exam results so you're just just sticking yeah, in there yeah. we, we spoke we spoke to a guy a couple of weeks ago and he said you know stay in the fight you've always you've always yeah. got to stay in the fight for as long as you can so it's good that you've echoed that so you, gra- sure. you graduate Ty um, and, and how do things look next for a young aspiring basketballer who's graduated in the US we hear a lot about drafts and all different yeah. sorts of things, but how does all that play out? What happens next? Oh, then you, uh, after college, then it's time to sign an agent, you know, and then you kind of step into the real world of, of uh, the basketball business. So you got to get someone to represent you. And then once you get representation, you know, based on how well you uh, performed in your college career, you can, you can get offers to come to what they call the summer league, you know, NBA teams. Uh, even before that, sorry, they, they invite like there's a bunch of like combines they call them where they mm-hmm. kind of just test test your skills. They will invite like whoever they think are the best, you know, guys that they like, and they'll um, invite them to a combine. You know, there's a couple of different combines, the NBA ones, and then there's the combines for just all the best uh, seniors that have graduated and stuff like that. So then you go to a combine and there's a bunch of NBA scouts and they're all there just with clipboards, just watching you, like you know vultures just <laughs> watching their prey type thing you know and you're just like riddled with anxiety trying to perform in front of all these like nba guys that you know have their dreams in your hands and stuff yeah. like that but yeah. yeah so you go through all that and then if you're lucky enough to you know get a couple likes or something you know they might invite you to to uh, to come practice with them for a bit and then summer league is uh when you go away and play in the summer on the nba team which i did for um golden state and i did for uh, the Orlando Magic, and I did for Miami Heat. But yeah, so you just got to, from then on, it's pretty much just got to got to showcase your skills in front of, you got to go visit the teams and showcase your skills, you know? Yeah, yeah. and how, how was it? I mean, going to that summer league, I, I assume, I, obviously I've never been there, but you sort of, mm. you're in the big time with some massive, massive franchises, huge names, yeah, big yeah. players. Um, could you give us a perspective on what that was like for someone so young and so far yeah, away from yeah. home? What's that? What What does that feel like? I mean, yeah, it's it's just another that's another stepping into another. You know, it's stepping another stone up, going into the next level again. You know, it's riddled with anxiety. You know, it's it's crazy. It's stepping onto the to the main stage. You know, and like I said, you've got all those eyes on you. 
and it's do or die. You know, it's it's cutthroat. It is what it is. It's the business of basketball. You know, you either make it or you don't. You know, you either perform or you don't, and that's just just what it is. You know, it's test day. Yeah, yeah. And did you see anything there? You know, anything that when when you get to that level, you're all pretty good. Like you're all very good. Um, yeah. Technically, all as sound as each other. Is there anything that you could put your finger on which really separated the good from the great ones? Like, did you see anything? Did you pick anything up um, that only a very select minority were doing, whether that's mindset, whether it's training? Yeah, yeah. What was the difference between the absolute elite and everyone else? I mean, it was tough to see. It was tough to see with, with the other guys that were kind of my age that, mm. that made it and went forward at the time. But like, when I when I when I'm when I was in that environment, being that age and seeing the guys that were already established on the NBA teams, like guys like you know, when I was around um, Golden State, I got a chance to be around Seth Curry and stuff like that, and just watch the way that they worked and how long they were at the gym, and you know, like see what their type of timetables were like that, and just see the consistency that they would they would uh, like have, and uh, like and not only the consistency, but also just like how strict they were with their bodies and what they ate and stuff. That was kind of the first time I really saw into like, okay, like this is professional. This is proper. You know, you, you got to do every little thing to separate yourself. Like you said, everyone has the same skills at that point. You know, you got to do those little things that those little one percenters that just make you, you know, take you separate yourself from anyone. Cause it's a massive talent pool. You know, everyone's got the skills there. You know, it, it's just whoever's willing to do those extra little things to separate themselves as the ones that are going to make it. Yep, absolutely. And, and it probably, that brings us to a time when you made a brave, probably bold move and it was your time to make it, signing professionally um, in Germany, I believe. How did yeah. that come about? And, and obviously you're not shy of a new challenge, foreign country, new language, mm. everything. So what were some of your driving ambitions around that decision? Yeah, so I mean, so uh, we had done the summer league and stuff like that. And then obviously the NBA stuff had kind of fizzled out, you know, and they, that gave me an opportunity. I could kind of like come and come in uh, to the training camp and just try to work my way into the team, which not a lot of guys did make from that, from that route, you know, but, um, or I could just, you know, start making money and b become a professional and then, you know, come back to the NBA every summer and try to try and make the NBA in the summer with the summer league thing, you know? Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I, I mean, a lot of uncertainty after that, you know, I'm just kind of sitting around just waiting on phone calls from my agent, you know, just literally just sitting in my apartment I'm in Nebraska on the couch every day playing PlayStation, <laughs> waiting for a phone call. Like, you know, and sometimes there's phone calls and he's calling me and there's like, you know, jobs in Japan or China and they're offering like terrible money that I could just, you know, end up just playing in the New Zealand league, you know, and I'd be a million times happier. So it feels like you know nothing's ever going to come, but then finally I got finally got a good uh, I got finally got a good offer in uh, Germany, and it was a really good gig for a first you know for someone fresh out of college. Yeah, yeah. And if we can just take it off the court now, I suppose. Did you learn anything about yourself? You know, moving away. If, I know you've moved to America, but moving abroad yeah. again is another big step. Did you learn anything about yourself? Um, about what makes you you from being away from home and new language, new culture, new everything. Oh, really. yeah. I mean, yeah, you learn everything. You learn everything. You know, those are some of the loneliest times of my life, being away from my family, being in college, and especially being over, being a professional and playing overseas. Like, that's those are definitely the most lonely times, you know, all over in a foreign country by yourself. Literally just, you know, guys, and you might have one or two, two guys on your team that can even speak English. So, you know, you learn everything. You realize what what type of person you are. You you know you you're really with your demons and stuff like that. You know, yeah. and, and you know there's 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 terrible times and there's great times. You know, and I just for me, I just learned you know like just kind of just writing just writing life. You know, I've always kind of had a a positive outlook on 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 life. Always kind of been able to smile through things and stuff. So yeah, just you know, kind of it was kind of just reasserted what I thought of myself. You know, that I was I was strong enough to go off into the world by myself and yeah do those things yeah chase and, my dreams and stuff absolutely we're going to come on to dr dreams i suppose in a moment and and but what we'd what we'd like to know or what you know the boys they've all got their favorite nba teams they love the nba but could you give an insight into you know the european leagues you're playing in the the level yeah. and the the passion and the how big it is in europe as well 
It's huge in Europe. You know, the, the biggest league being the, is the Euro League. And right under that, they have the Euro Cup. I played in the Euro Cup. I played for a massive club called, the, just before I played for the Breakers, I played for a club in Turkey called Galatasaray, massive soccer club, like millions and millions of fans. And they all just leak over into the, the basketball. Like literally, they'd go watch the soccer game all day. And then at nighttime, thousands and thousands of fans would come, you know, 20,000 fans type thing would come to the, come to the games and watch these Galatasaray, you know, basketball games after they've yep. been watching soccer all day. It's, it's their life, you know, the club, they, they live and die for the club, literally, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, I mean, certainly in football, it's got such a huge reputation, Galatasaray, and you see the yeah, crowd yeah, with the definitely. flares, it's so atmospheric and that. passionate, and they're bringing that across to the basketball, which is, which will be awesome yeah, to see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and then your time in Turkey sort of comes to an end, you know, a lot of it, not through your making, you know, the pandemic yeah. and, and things. Um, and then it's, it's time to come home. Was it, did it feel like coming home to the breakers? Was it something you really um, were looking forward to? Um, what were your thoughts about returning back to New Zealand? Um, obviously I had to come back because of COVID, you know, I had a, I had a chance to renew my contract. I could have gone back to Galatasaray, but, I didn't. Um, I just didn't know what was going on with the world at the time. You know, COVID was was so new, and and honestly, my family was scared. You know, I remember my mum telling me that I should just come home. Like, yep. you know, obviously because we didn't know what was going to go happen in the world. So it was it was real scary times. And um, also, what did you want to know? What was the question again? Sorry, just how it felt coming home, and and oh know, yeah, 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 how it was, how it all played out from there. Yeah, I mean, it was it was premature for me, you know, I was to come home that early. You know, I, I was still chasing. You know, I wanted to I wanted to make the Euro League. I was in the Euro Cup with Galatasaray. I wanted to to bounce up to a, a team in the Euro Cup because you know I'm in the Euro League. Sorry. Yep. Because in the Euro League, that's a good look, you know. And NBA teams are watching and stuff like that, you know. So yep. it's it's an all eyes are on Europe, you know. Especially lately, Europe is you know with guys like Luka Doncic and you know arguably the best player in the NBA right now, European guy grew up playing in the Euro League, you know, so it's those leagues are no joke. So yeah. coming back for me was kind of a bittersweet thing. You know, I, I, I really didn't want to come home, but I did all the uncertainty around COVID. But then on the other side of that as well, I was going to be able to play in front of my family, which yeah. was something huge. I haven't played in front of my family since I was, you know, at Westlake really. Mm. And, um, and my brother was on the team as well. And I always wanted to play with my brother, like on a pro, I played tall blacks and stuff with him, but that was just, you know, those aren't like, playing a proper season with someone and we always talked about something you know ever since we were kids you know being on the same team and and it came and so it was it was a definitely a bit of a bittersweet thing for me to come back to the breakers yep absolutely and it's, it's great to have you back i know the fans have really taken to you um really well and i was i've got a question just about you know what's it like being teammates with your brother but i suppose you've touched on that a little bit but also it feels like sometimes the breakers in Westlake, they're so intertwined. There's, there's been so many over the years. What, what's that like? Yeah, Is it a bit of a sense of a, a brotherhood there? And, you know, you've yeah, got a bit awesome. of a connection with those guys. That's awesome. It's us versus them, you know. Sometimes they split us up and it's like the Westlake guys versus, versus everyone else, you know. <laughs> Who wins? Kick their ass, you know. Us, <laughs> of course. What do you mean? It's Westlake. Brilliant. Um <laughs> Yeah, and it's obviously it is it is great to have you back, and we're we're, we're probably um, I know you you know you've got a few things to do. We're going to draw this to a close relatively soon, Ty. Um, is there anything you could um, impart for the boys now, just around your thoughts on attitude and mindset, belief? Um, you know, boys mm -hmm. that are having tough times. Um, how would you cope with that or how have you coped with that and and what could you say about off the court stuff that's that's really helpful for the boys to know um i'll just say perseverance you know i remember i remember when i was year what do we call it fifth form when i was in school was fifth form is year 11 year 11 yep as year 11 i was I remember in year 11 i got kicked off the i got kicked off the premier basketball team because i had a bad attitude and I was, and I, I remember, um, like, this was right before nationals as well. Like, I remember um, that I was, and that I, I hated, I hated Mr. Uh, Mark Jackson at the time. His name was Mr. Jackson, who kicked me off the team, was the coach of the basketball team. And I hated him. And I wanted to, I wanted to leave but, uh, Westlake. I wanted to, my mum worked at Kristen. I wanted to go to Kristen. I was going to leave Westlake and, you know, I'm going to 
in a like you know, get my revenge on Westlake, all of that, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna <laughs> and all that. And I think the smartest thing I ever did was just persevere through that time because that was such a dark time for me as well as a kid. You know, I was I was so shocked, you know, like coming up, I felt like I was probably, you know, one of arguably one of the be- better players on the team already as a fifth former, but my attitude was so poor and rightfully so that he kicked me off because it was poor and, and it was hurting the team. And I think just like being able to step back and look at myself and then just persevere through that was like what made me, you know, re- really be able to battle and, and translate that like into my, into my life outside of school as well. Yeah. I mean, sorry, outside of basketball as well, you know, there's always, there's always going to be tough times, you know, no one's exempt. Everyone gets their, their fair share of hard times in this life. And just having experiences like that and just being able to fall back on, you know, stuff that I had learned and being able to persevere. Because, like, you know, basketball was everything to me when I was in high school, you know. And to lose that, to be kicked off the team, I was embarrassed. I, you know, I, I hated it. It was a tough, tough time for myself. Mm. And for that, and to, you know, be able to fall back on experiences like that and just to know that I can persevere through that. And if I can make it through that, I can make it through anything, I feel like, you know. Yeah, and it, it does really highlight, I mean, we talk about having a positive attitude, you know, and, and coming back from adversity a lot in the school in all forms, you know, poor exam result here and there, you know, like you alluded to, not, you know, being able to stay on the team, but also not getting into yeah. a team, um, not being selected when you think you are brilliant. And exactly, um, it just shows that sticking in and staying in the fight, whatever you want to call it, is, is paid you back. And mm-hmm. you get to sort of lean on those experiences as well when things get tough again. So it's, it's refreshing yeah. to hear how well you've reflected on that. And I'm sure there's a couple of year 11 boys now who are probably listening going, uh, I sort of know <laughs> what he's talking about. And, and Your spot's it, not safe. Your spot's <laughs> not safe. <laughs> it's good Better to hear perform. that. Right? Yeah. I mean, I just want to finish with, um, with one thing um, before we go, Ty, and we thank you for your time and attention. Um, you spoke about dreams a couple of times. You know, what's, what is the dream for you now? You've had all this experience to reflect on. You've US, you've been in Europe. Do you still have any goals, ambitions, and, and what's the real dream? How, how are we going to play out from here? I got to get back to Europe, and then from Europe, I got to go back to the I got to get back to the Euro League, and then I got to go to the NBA from there. I'm still I'm still dreaming on the NBA. I'm still working on the NBA, I'm still plotting on them, I'm still trying to align things in my life so that so, you know I might have a couple of moves coming up in the next couple of days that that align with the dreams. Right. You know, I'm still working on that. Definitely trying to get to the NBA. I feel like we might have got a bit of a scoop there, Ty. We're the first ones to no, we won't broadcast anything. Don't worry. <laughs> if you know, you know. If you know, you know. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and I suppose that we always finish with this. Um, you get to have the last couple of sentences before we let you go. Just any any advice for the boys, anything you'd like to to impart or leave with them before you go? Um closing words, I suppose. Um I would just say just follow your dreams for me. It's like, you know, still, I'm 26 now, still chasing my dream that I had since I was in primary school, I guess, you know, I think, you know, people, people have laughed at my dream when I've told them and stuff, but I think the bigger the dream, the better the dream, you know, and I'm still chasing mine to this day and I'm, I'm still, you know, persevering, still going through shit. You know, I have days that I, I don't want to do it anymore, but I'm still waking up every day grateful that I even have the opportunity to to you know chase my dreams so I think just you know hold on to those and just follow them yeah and I think that's a fitting place to end Ty you know you've we, we put the call out we you came back to us and we we got this done I'm so pleased we managed to sit down um and it's really refreshing to hear how much you reflected on things but also how that that fire still burns pretty pretty brightly inside you and I'm sure with that attitude and their ability the MBA you know why not not why it's why not and and it's great we'll be behind you 100 percent. you've always got a home at westlake and we thank you so much for your time and it's great to see you so that's i think that's where we'll do that mr ferguson's just awesome. said magic tie well done absolutely brilliant so he's still a fan of yours 40, 50 <laughs> minutes God. later he's still your biggest supporter awesome. so that's thank good you. thank you so much for having me i appreciate that an absolute pleasure gentlemen we wish you um a lovely weekend we hope things are going well we hope you've really enjoyed um hearing from ty and you can watch this back and you can um you can reflect on it too because there's so many good messages in there so from all of us thank you very much ty and we wish you the absolute very best take care awesome thank you very much thank you bye now